Joining us now, Republican Michelle Morrow. She is in Cary this morning. Michelle, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you so much for inviting me. All right, so first question. As superintendent, give me what you think would be your one line mission statement. To make our schools the safest buildings in the state, to fo focus on academics over agendas and activism, and to ensure that all of our hard earned tax money and classroom time is focused on student success. There you go. Uh, when it comes to academics, it, it, Recent numbers have come out and showed we are making improvements. We're not back to levels we are uh, pre-pandemic, but when it comes to some of the test scores, uh, the state schools are making improvements. I assume you say it's not enough. Yes, you're correct, because when we look at where we were even 20 years ago, across all demographics, every student has is dropping, every student population is dropping in their competency for math and for reading. And so this is beyond COVID. This is a lack of focus on the students and academics, and it's time for us to get back on track and understand what the point of public education in North Carolina is. Um, this week, state lawmakers voted to give more money for opportunity scholarships, totaling about uh, half a billion dollars this year. It would fully fund the 50,000 student wait list that currently exists. Now, there was once uh, they were once reserved for just lower income families, and now the wealthiest family can, can get that check for $7,500, I believe it is, uh, for a private school. Do you support that? I absolutely support having options for families, but my number one reason for running for superintendent is to make our public school system the absolute best that it can be. Understand, if there was not such abject failure, if there weren't so many, we would have people wanting to be in the public school system. There's a reason why we are losing teachers and we're losing students at an alarming rate, and that is because our public school is not following through on our promise to provide every single student in North Carolina a sound basic education that's going to prepare them to be successful adults. That's why I'm running. The focus should be that public school is the absolute best option for everyone, but we need to help these students that do are not getting the education that they deserve. Uh, that brings me to my next question. At, at a time when public schools, um, a lot of feel are being undermined and underfunded, I think we rate right now 40th for teacher salaries. How are you going to be a champion, the advocate for those 1.5 million students, 90,000 teachers? You're very open about homeschooling your kids. How are you going to be that advocate? I have already been an advocate for the last five years, just on my own time. I have fought to get the Parental Bill of Rights passed, as well as to protect our women's sports. I have been fighting to get rid of the medical abuse that happens via puberty blockers, hormone replacement therapies, as well as the um, transgender surgeries that are mutilation surgeries. I have been fighting to get real math back into the schools, and I will continue to do so, and I will be the voice of the people of North Carolina Listen, we have the money we need to ensure that our teachers are paid well, but the problem is we have way too many pet projects, there's bureaucratic overreach, there is administrative bloat, and it's time for us to focus every dollar first on students and classroom resources and the boots on the ground who are with our ch children every single day trying to prepare them to be successful adults and to reach their fullest potential. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do it with an audit. I'm going to not just audit our finances. I'm also going to audit programs. And if a program cr cannot prove in the last five years statistically that they have helped our students with academic success, character development, or career preparedness, that project needs to be on the chopping block. How do you address teacher turnover? We know it's a big issue right now. The number one thing I'm hearing as I have traveled this state for the last three years is our teachers want to have safety, civility, and respect in the classrooms. They are upset that they do not have the backing of the administrators, that they are being forced to have these hard conversations with parents. And honestly, it's time for us to bring a code of conduct to our public education system so that every staff, teacher, and student understands what is expected of them in the classroom in terms of conduct as well as academic performance. We have got to make our schools be a place that the teachers and the students cannot wait to get there in the morning. And I think if we will 
make safety and discipline and, and civility the rule of the day in every classroom. And we will also give our teachers the trainings they need that are going to be purposeful and helpful in helping our kids scholastically. And we're also have the, the administrators will have the backs of the teachers and they don't feel like they are fighting against an administration. We will be attracting new people to the field and we will also be retaining and recruiting excellent professional teachers to Michelle, North Carolina. Maybe I missed it there, but you did not say a thing about teacher pay raises. Well, I absolutely believe that we need to pay our teachers more. I think it is ridiculous that teachers need to have two jobs in order to make ends meet. But I will tell you that even in teacher surveys, that is number four on their reason for leaving the field. I'll tell you also that many teachers are leaving to go to private schools where, where across the board, they get paid less. That's because I believe teaching is a calling. Teachers do not go into this because they want to be millionaires. They go in because they love students, because they love a subject, because they are service oriented and they want to invest into the lives of our young people. So we must make that learning environment, that work environment be the absolute best it can be. And absolutely, our funding should be starting with giving raises to our teachers instead of to our administrators and instead of to our special interest groups that are getting wealthy off of the failure of our school system. This week, South Carolina passed a ban on cell phones in schools. Uh, is that something that makes sense to you? Absolutely. Uh, care to see that happen here in North Carolina schools? Is that something you'd support? 100%. In the classroom, we do not need our children to be on their phones. Uh, it's fine for them to have it in their backpack, fine for it to be in their locker, wherever it might be. So after school, they can contact their parents for pickup or for whatever details are going to happen outside of school. But we need to look at the fact that we have a literacy crisis in North Carolina. Our students are not reading or doing math at grade level across the board, across all demographics. We need to look at the increase in bullying. Sure. I want your listeners to know that in the last five years, there has been an 84% increase in bullying, crimes, violence in our classrooms, as well as drug use. It's time for us to focus on face-to-face -face conversations, instruction, because that is what our students are going to need as adults to be able to have conflict resolution, problem solving skills, and to be able to self-regulate themselves and have empathy and compassion. Uh, the, the latest state data I saw was that, that incidents involving crime and violence ha have risen, but assaults on, on school personnel are, are actually lower than they were five years ago. Um, and we should say that, that while we say this about public schools, private schools that are, are getting these vouchers that we just talked about, um, not they're not, required to release that information at all. So we can't really draw a comparison between public schools and private schools on that. Um, when it comes to no, federal funding- I, Let me just share with you, sure. I can promise you, I can promise you, private schools, they are not losing students because of violence. They're not losing teachers because of violence because there is a very strong code of conduct in every public private school. Well, and but, when but, you but are in fairness, paying- In fairness, when it, in fairness though, well, we, let me just say, when, you, you can't when a parent is schools. paying out of pocket for they're paying their taxes to the public school system and they're paying additionally for their children to be educated, they're going to ensure that their child is respectful of the teacher and they're doing what they need to do. I just don't think it's fair to blanket all private schools together when they're individual entities. I'm simply making that point. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think it's right to just say that they're not being held accountable because they're being held accountable by the people that are choosing to spend their hard earned money to not only on their taxes that they pay, but also in addition to have their child have an excellent education. Right. So there think, is a, there so. is a check and balance in there, um, and that's that's people would not be going if their children were not being served well. I would argue that parents might have a say in it, but taxpayers in general do not have a say whether or not uh, things happening in those private schools meet their standards. Uh, that that's just not happening. It can't happen actually. Um, would you well, reject I'll tell you this, that the people of North Carolina have not had a say in what's going on in the public schools of North Carolina. 
we are failing to provide our students with an education that will allow them to be competitive in the global marketplace we find ourselves in. And we don't have a choice as to whether or not we pay our taxes. So we need someone in the superintendent's office that is going to ensure that every dollar that is spent is focused on student success and not on building up a failing system. Speaking, speaking of money, should we reject federal funding for schools? No, that feder federal funds are coming from our pocketbook. What we need to reject is the stranglehold that ha they have on us in, in keeping that those funds from us if we are not pushing their political agendas. That is what we need to push back against. The federal government should have no say in our in our um, uh, in our curriculums in how we how we train or how we hire our staff for our schools or in what our discipline policies are. That has got to be happening at the state level. And our state constitution gives the General Assembly, the State Board of Education, and the superintendent the, the awesome task of ensuring that that happens and that every student, regardless of where they live in the state of North Carolina, is getting an education get a, an excellent education that will allow them to pursue careers that are going to make them financially independent and are also going to give back and use their skills and talents in a way that is going to serve their community. Uh, next up, um, something that this, this uh, race has gotten a lot of attention, um, specifically nationally. And let's be honest, a superintendent's race usually doesn't get a lot of attention, <laughs> um, you know, in, in national press. Um, but but this one has a lot based on things, some of the things you've said on social media in the past. It's been talked about before. Um, like a lot of people, you, you, you posted some out there things on social media. If that was a qualifier for folks to run, a lot of people just wouldn't run. But but as you talk about instilling morals and values in students, as you know, you've tweeted about Barack Obama needing to face the firing squad. You've tweeted kill the traitors in terms of uh, Joe Biden. Uh, I know you said that's sarcasm. OK, uh, but it strikes me for a lot of people that crosses a line. Um, I know a lot of well, people. I, I know a lot of people who it, are really into politics on each side. And once you talk about like killing people, that, that that's really a line too far. So why shouldn't parents be worried about that? You, you are asking them to trust you with their kids and talking recklessly like that. Well, let me share with you what people are really concerned about, the serious voters of North Carolina. They are concerned about the fact that our current school system was hiding from parents the fact that children wanted to change their gender and be called different pronouns. You know what our families are concerned about? They're concerned about the bullying. They're concerned about the fact that there have been guns and knives found in elementary schools here in North Carolina. You know what they're worried about? They're worried about that their children are going to come home alive at the end of a school day. So I don't find it at all surprising, while it is very shameful, it is not surprising that the left is wanting to focus on five-year-old comments made on a social media thread, which, by the way, that was a response to the question, what should happen to people, these people specifically, who are found guilty of treason? So when I talk about it being a sarcastic response, it was in line with what should happen when anyone across the board, regardless of what side of the aisle you find ourselves in, Justice should be balanced, it should be blind. And what I'm saying is in North Carolina schools, the laws in our on our books need to be obeyed in the schools as well as outside of the schools. And I am focusing on safety. I am focusing on scholastics. I am focusing on every decision that's made being in the best interests of our students. And I will tell you this, my opponent is the antithesis of me. He has spent I, I, I eight just years saying, Michelle, Michelle, as you're the talking CEO about, of Michelle, the far just, left just, radical you. group. You well, why don't you about, ask him? You are talking about why don't you safety. Ask him, you're talking about safety. Why don't you're talking you? about bullying. You're talking about morals. You're talking about values. You're and, exactly and you're, right. And it you're is not bullying. You're it is not bullying a tweet as a five years ago where you're calling for killing people. And here you're talking about bullying and killing people. I am calling for people to be held accountable to the fullest extent of the law. And if you look at our Constitution, if someone has been found guilty of treason and has used their 
their power and their influence to harm the people of the United States of America and to rob us of our freedoms, then absolutely, if they have been found guilty, then they should be held accountable for the safety of our citizens. This has nothing to do Would with what's happening Trump? in our schools. These are stated, these are these were stated in a private it, it, Does that it, there apply were to Donald five, Trump? 200 people that commented. I just want you to know something. Does that apply the to people Donald Trump? North Carolina, the people of North Carolina are done being manipulated by you all to not see what is the real problem in our schools and in our society. So is there a perfect person on this ballot? Absolutely not, sure. because Jesus Christ is not running. I want them to know I am going to be the voice of the people of North Carolina. I am going to ensure that our students are safe. I'm going to ensure that we are focused on academics and not on political and social activism. That brings me, and that, I'm going that actually to brings me to a great every point. hard earned tax dollar what, on what student role, success. What role, what role do you think Christianity should play in, in our public schools? Well, I think that we I think that we should absolutely go to ensuring that our students are learning what it means to be a person of integrity. I think that we need to focus on what all of us agree and all of the three main religions. What are they focused on? Judaism, Islam, as well as Christianity. They look to the Ten Commandments as a guidepost for how people should act. We need to teach our children to be honest, to be perseverant, to be respectful, to be hardworking, and to be helpful toward one another. Those are character traits that need to be infused back into every school in our state and we need to be teaching our children how to handle conflict healthily in a healthy manner do you, do how you think, to be do you think do you think how uh, to be critical thinkers don't mean to cut you off i'm just trying to get as much in as we can um despite a spirit of the debate do you think the ten commandments should be posted in all schools sure i mean but i think even more important is the 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 attitude of the Ten Commandments in terms of people taking personal responsibility for themselves and being accountable is really what we're wanting to infuse, even more so than posting something on a wall. I think it needs to be the atmosphere that is being created. Gotcha. Okay. The final question. Uh, you have said, I think here and in other places, that you don't think politics belongs in the classroom. Um, I think you've been pretty consistent about that, indicating that. Um, but, you know, a cursory glance, and I invite folks at home to do this, um, at the social media accounts of yours, uh, of Mo Green's, of current superintendent Catherine Truitt, even look over at South Carolina, their superintendent, Republican Ellen Weaver. Uh, Mo Green posts a lot about campaign stuff and the race and things like that. Truitt posts a lot of congrats to schools about different achievements. Ellen Weaver down in South Carolina posts a lot about school choice. Um, Looking at yours, recently, I mean, you, you've tweeted about the Kennedys, um, immigration, saying if you had a control of the military, we would have a secure border. Um, something about pro-Hamas radicals as well. You, you tagged popular conservative bloggers like Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson. Nothing wrong with that at all. But you, you are obviously very clearly passionate about politics and current affairs. And you, you clearly enjoy talking about them. But, but parents could be skeptical that you're not wanting politics in the classroom is what you're saying, but your online activity is, is very overtly political compared to your other contemporaries. Could critics say that you're more motivated by politics and less than, say, educational issues? Well, you might understand that we are actually in a political debate right now. I am appealing to the people who are engaged in politics because the reality is this, this is a political race. And so of course I am discussing where I stand on political issues, but does that mean that I am going to be forcing that into the classrooms? Absolutely not. What I am going to focus on is that our children understand civics. They understand the true history of the United States and of the world. They are going to know what the Constitution says and the fact that the Constitution does not give us our rights. They are given to us by Almighty God. 
The reason why the Constitution was written was to protect the individual rights from the overreach of government. I understand this. I have taught this. I have studied this for years. And I am engaged in a political debate with adults online. They want to know where I stand and what I will stand for. But people also need to know this is an advocacy role. This is going to the General Assembly. This is in allowing all of the 115 districts to have the resources they need to ensure that our teachers are wanting to come to school in the morning and they are equipped to help every student, regardless of what their ability is, to reach their fullest potential. So the, we, are, we are at a crossroads. The, pro, the difference that you're seeing with my opponent is he continues to talk about upholding a system. It's all about the system for Mo Green. It's all about the student for me and ensuring that our students understand it is not just a blessing to be a citizen in the United States of America. It's also a responsibility. And we need our children to be equipped to be the leaders that we need in the future, the entrepreneurs, the inventors, the civil servants that understand what it means to be a nation of the people, by the people, and for the people. And that is who I am as a person. I am not beholden to the system. I am coming in with a fresh set of eyes. I'm coming in with fresh ideas. And I'm going to surround myself with experts who are the best at what they do, who are focused 100% on serving the students and the families of North Carolina. And that is the difference. I am not here to just celebrate a failing system. I'm here to make sure that the system serves the students. You may see the media as the enemy, but I'm glad that we gave you this platform to come on and to better explain your views. Michelle Morrow joining us from Cary this morning. Michelle, thanks for coming on. We do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me.